Hi and welcome to a video tutorial. I'm going to go over manual placement for the bar apps for 2.0 themes. This technique can work for the quick announcement bar, the free shipping bar, the countdown timer bar, and the email collection bar. The first thing that you'll need to ensure is that in the bar app, you are setting the placement of the bar to manual placement. It's the last option on the list. In the countdown timer bar, it's labeled as place the countdown timer bar at any position. So select that manual placement option and save the bar. Now we need to get into the customize section for the theme. Over here on the left, I'll click on online store, then themes. Here on the right, I'll click customize. We're now in the customize section for the theme. At the top in the center, you can see that I'm currently editing the home page. I can click here and a drop down menu appears. I can then choose to edit other pages. We'll cover that in a bit. So with 2.0 themes, we now have the option to place the bar manually by adding the bar as a section or as app blocks. And it's fairly simple. I'll just start by collapsing all my sections so it's easier to see. So if I want to add the bar as its own section, I can do so by clicking Add Section. And if I scroll down all the way, I can see the apps that are available to be added as sections. There's my quick announcement bar, free shipping bar, countdown timer bar, and email collection bar. I'll select Quick Announcement Bar for now. And there you'll see it appeared at the bottom of the page. From here, I can grab it by the dotted tab and move it around. Note that I don't grab the dotted tab of the bar, but of the section it's in. If I grab the tab for the bar, I can only move it within the section. I need to grab the tab for the app section, and then I can move it around the page. I can bring it all the way up to just below the header. But using this method, I can't go above the header. You need to get into code editing for that. And it's the same with other bar apps. I'll bring in the countdown timer bar using the same method and drag it up. And there we go. Now you'll notice that there is some space on either side of the bar. If you want that space gone and for the bar to stretch edge to edge, you can click on the section label here that reads apps. And now over here, I have the option to uncheck this box, make section margins the same as theme. If I uncheck that, the bar is no longer bound and it will go edge to edge. You may also see something like this little space here. Different themes have different styling rules. In this particular case with this theme, if I click on the header, you can see down here there's an attribute for bottom margin. I can adjust that and you can see the space shifting accordingly. I can get rid of it entirely if I set it to zero. Same thing for this rich text area. Here there's a bottom padding attribute that you can adjust. This may vary depending on the theme you're using. So that covers placing the bar as a section, but there's another option, placing it as a section block. This way, the bar ends up as a component within a section. The best way to show that is on a product page. So let's switch over to editing a product page. For that, I'll click on the top center dropdown, and then I'll choose products, and then default product. One of my products loads up in this product template. I'll collapse the sections again, except for product information. That's the section we'll be inserting the bar into. So all these items are the components, or blocks, that make up the section called Product Information. At the bottom, I'll click on Add Block. Like before, options pop up. I'll scroll down and click Show More to see all my options. I'll grab Free Shipping Bar this time. But the same works for all the bar apps. So my Free Shipping Bar has been added as a block to the bottom of this section. I can now grab the dotted tab of the bar and drag it to wherever I'd like within the section. So you can see here on the left that I've placed it under the price block. And in the layout, you can see it right there under the price. You can pretty much place it in any order, such as above the Add to Cart button. I'll do the same with the countdown timer bar. I'll bring it in and place it among the blocks. You'll notice that when I click on the app block, there aren't any settings. The settings are still handled in the app, but this method allows you to place the bar more easily. And this same technique can be used on the cart page. I'll switch over. Here's the view when I have an item in the cart. I'll add the free shipping bar, and then I'll drag it and place it just under the subtotal. So now visitors can see right above the checkout button how close they are to free shipping. One unintended consequence to this method of placement is that if there's a page that doesn't have a block placed like we just did here, the bar may still display, but without a block telling it where to go, it may just end up at the bottom of the page. For example, while I did set up blocks for the home page, the product page, and the card page, I didn't set one up for the collections page. And if I visit my collection page, 
and scroll to the bottom, you can see the bar just displaying at the bottom. It just looks abandoned and sad. To avoid that, you can either make sure that each page is set up the way we did, or you can target the bar to not show on certain pages. For example, I can set the bars to not show on the collection pages by specifying that any URL with the keyword collections in it doesn't show the bar. So if I save and refresh, the bar isn't there anymore because up here in the URL, you'll find the word collections. And so the app didn't insert the bar. And that's all for this video. If you have any questions, please contact us for support.